to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Friday edition. Always excited to be back with you. Jason Moore, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman Right. I'm Andy Holloway. Al Borland and the Falcon back there in Deucer's Alley this morning. Say hello, everybody. Oh, the Falcon's in the middle. Yeah, Papa Josh is uh, once again off of work. I'm just saying, like, as as a human, I would not want the Falcon sitting in my seat. Not from like a, just, you know what he likes to do. And so like, I, I, do. Wor- I worry about his bottom the, touching the, my chair. Okay. Well, I mean, we, uh, we have bidets. That's true. I hope you're using bidets the bidet for days. Bidets for days. <laughs> <laughs> we have Thursday night football to talk about news and notes. We got some news on Amari Cooper and whether you can play him this week to report. We have the fantasy forecast. And the streak is finally over. We have the fantasy face-off, and um, I'm looking at it with the glass-half-full approach. I did take the L this week, and now I am not stuck. <laughs> oh, with Kyler Murray? With Kyler every week because he kept I, I mean, kept winning with Kyler. You couldn't use him this week anyways. But. I do feel like I was overcoming Kyler to win. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you he were, wasn't helping me. You were pot committed to the bit yeah. of like the 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 – Kyler stack um and so I'm happy for you that to you get freed. to move, that, that you get to move on um but it should be exciting I'm you know it doesn't matter what I do back to back uh champ right now so I'm okay I can lose this week <laughs> he did say that this morning Mike oh I, it's so it's so wow. true like if he gets a win or two if you lose twice in a row in fantasy face off yes. that third week is like I am yes <laughs> I'm doing whatever <laughs> the loss in fantasy face-off, it comes for everybody. Yeah, you, you sadly. Can, you can't avoid it the entire season. No. It's just not possible. But, yeah, when you get that two in a row, oh, man, that third you're, week you're is. Pr- you're praying what's for What's the no record? Third. Is it four? I think. Four. I, I'm sure I have it. I think you did four once. Mm, that's great. <laughs> Jointhefoot.com is our fantasy football community of uh, incredible human beings. Uh, come join the Discord server. It's free. You can check out uh, – just tons of great conversation around the game of football, fantasy football, start sit decisions, leagues you can join, and all of that is part of jointhefoot.com. Last night was atrocious. Um I told you, if they gave us a good game, I would give them a redo of the it's football time. It was You'll notice <laughs> that did not happen. One team gave us a good game. Yeah. And that's only kind of. You know, it's like I don't want to take away anything from the Broncos. The, I think the storyline of the game, without question, was the effectiveness of the running game. Javante Williams, the offensive line. Jason, you talked about McClinchy coming back. Yeah, Mike McGlinchey made a monster. I watched him the whole game. Their, their right tackle was a very good veteran right tackle, and he made a world of a difference. So, you know, the Javante thing, is he healthy? Is he back? Is this real? I, you know, we can't know for sure, but I will say, Going forward, whoever is running the ball, McGlinchey makes a huge difference. No, Patrick Sertan did not matter for the Denver defense. And Spencer Rattler, in my opinion, that was the worst game of football I've seen from a quarterback. It looked it, it looked like last year Derek Carr, where it was just like, uh, check, uh, Camara, Camara, where are you? I need to throw you the ball to get no yards. Be, what, six receptions? for 14 yards for Kamara. I mean, that's that's what what he did all last year. And I, I'm i with the decision for the Saints of like, hey, if Derek Carr is going to be out for a while, let's find out. Let's find out if Spencer Rattler has anything for us to move forward on. Low probability. I mean, he was, what, like a fourth or fifth round quarterback drafted, so you're not expecting much. But I don't mind them going that direction. I It will not be surprising if it's Hayner, if Carr misses another week. The Saints are so injured that yes. it's yeah. incredible. It, it's also a little hard to blame Rattler. Like, Olave is gone. Rashid Shahid is gone. Like, 
This was Taysom, Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill was gone. Was gone. The, this the, was their offense. Your, was, your best offensive <clears throat> lineman, Ruiz, gone. Yeah, their offense was it. incredibly, incredibly banged up to start this game. Their defense should have been okay. They lost both corners in the game, so they they finished the game incredibly banged up on defense. Um, yes. Apologies for the start there. We said both defenses were good. Yeah. I played the Saints I played the in Saints the league in of record. I, I played the Broncos. I was far far happier than both of yeah, you. <laughs> so whoops. So look look the top the top yeah. four receivers for the Saints were Cedric Wilson, Mason Tipton, Foster Moreau, and Bob Means. That is telling you. Yeah. The entire story. Now, who was the top receiver for the Broncos? Troy Franklin. Hey, hey, <laughs> That's just fun. Jason's dance right there felt like a kid's TV show. Oh, I dance like Franklin. Um, that was great. But let's get to the story, boys. All right. Javante Williams, 14 for Woo, 88 no, he... and 2. And I have to admit, Kill. yesterday during the show, we mentioned the fact like Mike and I are facing each other in League of Record, and he has Javante. I became terrified during the show that he would pivot out of Javante and play Tyler Goodson. Yes. I was afraid of that. I wanted to face Javante. Yeah. I des and then when Audric Estime got the first carry, I really wanted to face Javante. And then he entered the time machine to pre injury form. We fast, tackle breaking, efficient, first two touchdown game of his career. All up in Giant the Giant holes provided for him on the offensive line. If you pause that game right after the, the first carry from Estime, you that's the moment where you could have said Javante's career is over. Yes. Just don't ever unpause again. And then what? It what was, was that? I don't it was full Ty Johnson, except Javante is the veteran who's supposed to get the one carry at the beginning and then they he move on. He was out there for the whole like yes, Estime got the first carry, but Javante was out there for like right. five or six snaps at least. Yeah, for, for the first possession. But it was when Estime got the first carry, my heart just completely dropped because it was the decision. If you listen to the show yesterday, it was I was going to go Goodson had Trey Sermon missed another practice on Thursday. He was limited, so I was like, I that don't, was enough to go. Javante. It was I can't take this chance that it's going to be a full timeshare. And maybe, how would you have reacted with him on your oh, bench? Oh, I would have. I would have been deceased, fellas. But he wasn't on my bench. He was in my starting lineup and. Uh, the reason why last week for Javante was so devastating is like I've been watching Javante very close the first few weeks of the season. I'm sorry for you, they, but it's it's been a ride though. The first few weeks of the season, we talked about it. Javante looks looks awful. Like this guy has there's there's no speed, there's no burst, and then there was these after the first few weeks. You know, I brought up like, hey, we can't talk about Javante too loud. Because he's looking mm -hmm. good, and then we then he fell on his face that week, and it was all well. Maybe maybe that's all just fool's gold. So I don't I don't know what I, to make of this. So, but he he it wasn't just production. He looked fantastic. I will say this: it, it's really a month of actual quality running for Javante. Yes. It, it really is. Last week was a a down week, but the the week prior and the week prior were were solid, very solid outings. They're getting their offensive line healthier. Bo Nix should only get better as they go along. I hope. Uh, yeah, I mean, we we all hope there there was some. Uh, you know, he got the win, but he didn't look outstanding. Man, he needs. He to work ran on his the ball well. He was ten for seventy five on the ground. He, he had th some throws, those little collegiate efficiency throws that were awesome. Managed to throw the ball in between two wide open receivers on that twice. Piece. Yes, he yeah. twice. <laughs> he 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 was really good at like getting it over one wide receiver and under the other where Who's no one that knows. Too? Both of you. <laughs> right. Yeah. I want two targets on this one. Um but next week the they they face Carolina, the thirty second ranked run defense. So Javante Williams is looking solid right now. You it, might want to target the New Orleans yes. rushing defense here on out. I mean they are they have been the dead last in the NFL against running backs since week three. So that could also have played it into could, yeah, yeah. the Javante performance. Overall, you know, the other story that I want to mention, no targets, zero for Cortland Sutton. So could he be moved? Could the team be doing the youth movement? Marvin Mims caught two passes. Troy Franklin oh. was five for 50. Oh, my goodness. Andy, I have not thought about that as an option, and it makes complete sense for this team. When Peyton is coming out and saying they are a young team, they need to get the youth on the field, and they're doing it more, if they trade Cortland Sutton, if Cortland Sutton went to the Chiefs or something like that, 
Oh, it's Franklin time. I just can't wait. Because he actually, I know, I know I talk about, like, I, I believed in him coming into the draft, and I thought he was a great prospect, that he fell to the fourth round, and he's dead. And it's fun, and, and you can't start him right now. I'm not telling anyone out there in redraft to pick up and start Troy Franklin. But he did look good. He looked like the best wide receiver to my eyes on the field. He found space. He was fast. He actually caught the ball. It's kind of a big deal. Um, but if Corlin Sutton were traded, uh, then you might actually have something with Vele and, and Franklin yeah, where I mean, it's startable. You, you got to see no Sutton last night. Like, he was gone. Yeah, one target that was called back on a uh, – Yeah, I thought I saw him get a target. It was he, a penalty. Did, it was a penalty on the play. Yeah. So, yeah, just, just a race from the offense right now makes it tough to, to start him. All right, it's Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Every Friday, we want to say thank you to the Foot Clan supporters, and we give away a $100 gift card to fantasychamps.com and a fantasy footballers t shirt. And this week's winner, Jack Flapson. Jack <laughs> Flapson. Jack <laughs> Flapson. I hope that's his real name. Congratulations. It's a, it's a great name. It is an awesome name. I, I'm only a long a line of Flapsons. <laughs> Flapsons in the wind. It's what we call our family. <laughs> All right, all right. Uh, Jack, congratulations, I think. All right, <laughs> moving on. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. It was a full bick. Go on. It oh. was a, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Saints wide receiver Rashid Shaheed <laughs> was placed on IR. We found out after the surgery it was not a buzz. It was not a trim right. of the meniscus. Full bicked it, so they had to do the uh, surgery repair. He'll be back next season, but gone for this year. I think that's a sentence that has never been uttered in the history of humanity. Yeah, well, we're here to, to you know, we're breaking down barriers, break new ground, forge new paths. <laughs> Podcasting on the fantasy footballer. lets you do what you want. Two game time decisions for very important running backs playing in London: Ramondre Stevenson and Travis Etienne. Which both. Uh, ETM was limited. I don't think Ramondre has practiced yet. He's not there. I, there was a quote from Ramondre saying he thinks he's healthy enough to play. So I thought he did get in a limited practice uh, today. Or I'll I'll look that up. Okay, but there, yeah, it's it's London. So if you are a uh, West Coast slash Best Coast uh, resider, you better set that alarm if you're going to be counting on these guys. Uh, or or they're ancillary pieces like Antonio. I said it. Antonio Gibson was my start of the week at running back. That is based off of if Ramondre Stevenson plays. Yeah, so Mike Reese is reporting he was at practice today, and I see a, a tweet from 34 minutes ago, Ramondre Stevenson himself, saying he feels like he should be yeah. ready to play on Sunday. Does that mean I can – would you guys maybe consider letting me take Kamara out of my dynasty lineup and then put Ramondre in there and give it another go? No, but if you want to you double – Camara and use him twice in two slots, we will let you use oh, him again. Oh, okay. Well, that's the <laughs> willing to break the rules for some things. All right. Um, what else do we got? James Cook returned to a full practice. Ray Davis is been limited with a calf injury. It looks like James Cook may have it all back to himself. Boy, yeah. that changed quick. I mean, Ray Davis, the hero of this last week, uh, looked like, man, as long as Cook is out, Ray Davis is going to be a thing, and then the swi switcheroo. I honestly I, I had, because of the matchup, I thought about playing both in a certain league, like just putting them both in there. Uh, not going to happen now. Dalton Kincaid remained limited with a collarbone. I, I, practicing in a non-contact jersey. What? Like, the collarbone don't things. Do, do you have a banged up but not broken I, collarbone? So I, I wanted to bring this up yesterday because I don't remember a lot of, like, injured with, you know, shin or bones. Um but then there are bone bruises. Maybe that's yeah. what's, what he's dealing with. It's, it's a collar bruise? Yeah, I think he's got a collar bruise. But being in a non-contact jersey, uh, today's practice will be pretty important. Obviously, with Amari Cooper right now, it's being reported. He's expected to play against the Titans. Would you just – like? The, I'm struggling. This is a counseling session. All right, let's get to it. And it's going to apply to every Dalton Kincaid manager under the sun. Yeah, lay down on the couch. Dalton Kincaid has not been good. He is the tight end 10. He, is, he has one double-digit game. He's treading water. Treading water. That's a good way to put it. Tennessee is the number one defense against tight ends. Correct. If you were a friend of mine, okay. his name is Danny. Okay. Oh. Let's talk to Danny. And Danny had picked up Pat Fryermuth, who was playing against the Jets. It and does. you've got this collarbone just 
the collarbone shadow hanging over the situation. Would you just put Frymuth in there? Um, it's a it's a very very fair question. Frymuth, I believe, has outscored him so far on the year, thanks to a couple of touchdowns. Russell Wilson appears to be the starter. It has not been officially announced, but there was um, some words out of Russell's mouth that really did seem both him and Fields. It really seems like Russell Wilson is going to be the starter. That is not a hundred percent confirmed, but I, I'd put it at eighty five percent. There is a you know, a train of thought right now going that Russell Wilson coming in, he's going to be better for Fryermuth, better for uh, George Pickett. Uh, it just just the the reality of the receivers. Yeah, because I'm he's not, not running it as much. But and... I'm still not sure that is a fact. I know that – I think it's smart and brave <laughs> to say that the the 4-2 and two led Justin Fields, like we still need to see if that's our best version. We need to get Russell Wilson out there and see if we can still improve our team. I like them trying this out, but I don't think it is a gimme that he is better. The offensive line is trash. They lost their backup center, who was in there as their starter pretty much all year. They lost a Fontenot on the right tackle, so this is going to be a very bad offensive line, and I think without the mobile scrambling ability of Fields, Russ might just have a worse game. Yeah, but who, who, who do I start? If Dalton can This is for you? Oh, crap, Danny. Danny. Oh. Danny, you lied. Um, <laughs> you charlatan. In the end, I think crap. I would. If if Dalton Kincaid practices like in full today, I would go Kincaid. Obviously, if if he is really banged up, then I would go. Nice thing is Friar Muth is Sunday night. You can do the okay. Sunday pivot. So practice report is going to be the determiner for you. Yeah, health of Kincaid. Aaron yeah. Jones likely to play. Okay. Oh. TJ Hawkinson has passed every test by a mile. His knee is healed. His SATs are so good. Yeah, uh, never not going to play this week. But like by a mile, he's. I mean, these tests they're just rear view. You wouldn't even believe. You it. wouldn't believe how strong his knee is. Not ready to go yet. Uh, but you can't even fathom all the tests of whether he's ready to play. A plus. He's got a hundred and ten percent grade. Uh, just not ready to play. You know, it's like yeah. So maybe next week or the week after. Um, even. Jason, uh, the quote is obviously the acclimation process takes time. Right. Is that a test? Because no. He, then he failed that. Yeah, test. he failed that test. <laughs> Jonathan Taylor remains sidelined, not looking good. Trey Sermon, Josh Downs limited in practice. Michael Pittman full practice <laughs> because what are you doing, Pittman? He doesn't know. The back <laughs> is a mysterious part of the body. Huh. Alec Pierce added to the injury report with a shoulder injury. Um, you know, maybe Adonai Mitchell. Um. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Adam and I, Mitchell. Uh, that's actually not. I mean, obviously, if Alec Pierce were out and Downs and Pittman were hurt, with you know, Anthony Richardson looks like he's going to be the starter. He loves those big deep bombs. He almost hit uh, Adam and I on two of them in in week one. So that's that's you know maybe more of a sneaky DFS tournament play. Mm -hmm. if um, he, if they have, he will almost hit him <laughs> right again. But Pittman. Being like the IR versus I'm dominating on the field and I'm not sure how it's going, I you know they're I'm not saying it's because of Anthony Richardson, but the back issue is scary to play with Anthony Richardson. Like if if you get a murder ball and you know what I'm talking about, yeah, those, uh, yeah, a hospital ball. Yeah, yep. you're you're going across the middle and that ball is too high and you got to leap for it. Mm -hmm. That's your job and you're going to get crushed and you got a back issue. That's scary, man. Malik Neighbors cleared concussion protocol, but was also added to the injury report with a groin injury, so they're hoping it's not a problem. He has to get through practice, monitor that. We have a an injury blitz podcast, another feature of jointhefoot.com that is coming out later today, and I'm sure Matthew Betts will discuss that. Tyler Lockett added to the injury report, didn't practice, knee injury. Okay. Consolidation of targets, maybe JSN's more in play than he was before. Mike McDaniel, confident Devon A. Chain clears concussion protocol. And so we need the final medical expert to give the thumbs up. Rams Cooper Cup, limited in Thursday's practice. We haven't talked okay. a lot about it. Okay. The optimism is there. If he's back, he's back in your lineup, right? Yes, 100%. Brian Robinson, limited, missed last week with a knee injury. They expect him to play, but monitor that one going into game time. And uh, Eckler would be a really good play if Robinson missed. Mm hmm. Deontay Johnson back at practice on Friday. <laughs> Didn't practice Wednesday or Thursday. He's kind of been doing this, and then he's been playing and playing well, so 
We're optimistic. Yeah, he's my start of the week this week. He's been great. The matchup is perfect. Uh, if he is active, I will play him, even though there, there's clear fear here of missing practice all week. He had been in the previous weeks being limited every day and then playing. Now he's like just straight up not practicing this week. Yeah, he's like, can I get away with this? Yeah, and I think he can, yeah. and I think he will. And if I had him, I would certainly start him if he's active. Najee Harris returned to a full practice. Jalen Warren is not on the injury report. And uh, Mike Evans added to the yeah. injury report with a hamstring injury. Don't like that. It said that he tweaked something. He had a comment that he thought he'd be fine. So there's – there's uh, I don't see it in here, but Juju Smith-Schuster also added to the yeah. uh, limited participation due to a hamstring. You just hate Thursday popping up hamstring issues. When those, when those yeah. happen – I would say, you know, this is anecdotal. I don't have the data in front of me, but I'm I'm pretty confident that the majority of those, when they pop up late in the week with a hamstring, they end up missing that week. And I'm not saying that Evans or Juju are going to, but just you've got to be prepared for that. If you're relying on them, you've got to have a pivot option. Okay. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. We'll take a break. We'll hit the forecast. It's time for Fantasy Forecast, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. All right, yesterday we covered the Patriots-Jags, the London game, the Seattle Falcons game, Titans, Bills, Bengals, Browns, Texans, Packers, Dolphins, Colts, Lions, Vikings. But we've got more games, gentlemen. The Philadelphia Eagles, 3-2, and two, taking on the 2-4 and four New York Giants. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Philly minus three. The over-under is 42 and a half. I like the Giants' defense. I think they will be a problem for Philadelphia. I would agree last week or the week prior, but they are dealing with a ton of injuries. Um, I don't They're actually okay. – uh, yeah, Do I, you I, have the later uh, – Yeah, uh, newer from what report? I understand from the local beat writers, I know Brian Burns and a couple other guys – they said all those guys are going to be fine to play. Okay, that's that's huge to me because when I've been looking at this matchup, I've been assuming they're going to be without uh, a couple of those options. I'll, I'll pull up the latest practice report. But it, for me, we usually only look at – I mean, we as in like fantasy managers out there, you're looking at practice reports on the offensive player that you have. But this is one where – um, I'm I'm going to be looking at the practice reports for the defensive side of the ball. For Dexter the Lawrence, Brian Burns, yep. who had missed practice, both uh, will be back at practice today. Okay. And uh, the beat reporters are, were just implying that this was just some maintenance stuff. I don't know for certain, but that is the report we have from Madeline Burke this morning. Yeah, Can I mean, their defense has been outstanding. I mean, they, they have a great pass rush um, that can they can get after it. If they're healthy, you, you, you even though the Giants are bad, um, as as a team and their offense has struggled, you don't look at them the way you look at like a Carolina where it's just a cakewalk defense. No, in, in the implied point total is 22.8 versus 19.8. It's a three-point spread. So it should be interesting. Saquon returns home. Daniel Jones hopes to have D, uh, Malik Neighbors back. Malik Neighbors receiving lines at 72.5. So if he's okay. out there, the expectations are very high. Saquon and Neighbors are locked into your lineup. What are we doing with the running back position for New York where you got great value out of Tracy? Devin Singletary has been limited for two days. Do we think it's going to be Tracy by himself or are we just yeah, it, nervous about it? Um, it? I mean, obviously, if Devin Singletary doesn't go, Tyrone Tracy managers are thrilled because you can you can absolutely start him. His work in the receiving game means that even if he's up against a good defensive line, which – the Eagles should be. They haven't really performed that way so far this year, uh, but personnel-wise, they should be. I, I'm 100% like Tyrone Tracy is locked in my lineup if Devin Singletary's gone. The question that I've seen on Twitter a lot is, if Singletary's active, can you still play Tyrone Tracy, or can you even play Devin Singletary? Who would you start if both those guys are active, if you had to start one, and or would you just bench both of them? If I have to start one, I'm going to start Tracy of uh, He's he's looked very good. Like, you know, hey, this is this is a football player. You you did it, Giants. Good work. You you got a later round running back, and Devin Singletary still being limited with the groin injury. Clearly, that was a a 
a worse injury than they initially thought it was going to be. And so I just, yeah, if I got the two of them, I'm going Tracy. Just trying to work work through it, man, of like, what would you really do with this? And I'd go Tracy. AJ Brown, Devontae Smith are in there. Oh, they're I, new men. I want to draw attention to Theo Johnson, who is tied for third among all tight ends and routes run. He's a rookie for the Giants. Five targets two weeks ago, three targets this past week, on the field a ton. And again, tied for third among all tight ends and routes run. It, it, it could have just been a Malik Neighbors missing situation. But it, yeah, I mean, but you should watch young players when they get new opportunities. Yes, the I, I think Theo Johnson, which the way that you're describing him, I I can only assume we're going to hear about him in the DraftKings lineup later in the episode. Um, <laughs> him and Jadavian Sanders, two rookies who are both not the case. Oh, okay. Uh, Twenty eight hundred though. I did check on him. Yeah. Yeah, so but he's not in my line. Okay, I'm shocked, <laughs> but uh, he's. You always try to read my analysis. Like if I go a little deeper uh -huh, on a player, uh -huh. like oh, he shouldn't even know about this guy. <laughs> yeah, he's got to be squeaking him in. Um, yeah, I mean, keep an eye on him. I don't know that I would start him, uh, especially against the tight end uh, matchup against the Eagles. It's just not a good one. The Eagles are number two against tight ends, both schedule adjusted and otherwise. But keep an eye on him as a rookie. Um, what do you make of? the Eagles uh, coming out and and being new men as the head coach. Yeah, you, Is that what he said? Yeah, oh, yeah. Nick Sirianni, you, he Are was you asked. about the shaved head? The shaved, the shaved head, the new look for Sirianni. It's, he's all about this is turning the page. Well, he's look, a new man. This is one of the final stages before you get fired. <laughs> <laughs> you shave your head. You buzz yeah. your head. You buzz your head. You come you up with some buzz idi your idioms, beard. some idioms for, you know, why things are going to change and – Look, I, I don't think that it's out of the question that they lose this ball game. I have not been impressed with Philadelphia this year. I have not been impressed last with, year? with Jalen Hurts this year. Last year, uh, minus the final 10 games, yeah, they were pretty impressive. It, it, the Jalen Hurts thing is is so tough of he's had A.J. Brown, what, for two games? and Yeah, I, I think Jalen Hurts has been fine. In in both of those games with A.J. Brown, he's been, he's been solid. Well, he, in four he, of his five games, though, 33 or fewer rushing yards. That's worth noting. Sure. Uh, the the rushing yards, you'd love to see those go up. But if you look at the games where he had his receiving options, he's been a, a great fantasy option. Obviously, when you lose A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, that he struggled that game. Um, I don't. You'd love to see him overcome, especially against the matchup against Tampa Bay. But with both those guys back, obviously you're starting Jalen Hurts, right? Yeah. 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 The, the Raiders are two and four. They take on the one and four Rams in Los Angeles. The Rams are heavy home favorites here. DK Sportsbook has them at uh, minus seven. The over under is 43 and a half. And, you know, the Rams might get Cooper Cup back in this one. The offense for the Raiders has looked putrid. I think it is Madison and no one else, honestly, on that side. I mean, when you have a. Wide receiver get 95% of snaps and no opportunities in Trey Tucker last week. You have Jacoby Myers about to miss again. Um, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Brock Bowers. I didn't mean to leave Brock Bowers out of Okay. That. Brock Bowers and Madison are are some opportunity plays. Bowers is an every week play, but Madison against this defense seems fine. Kyron, Cooper Cup, what do you do beyond that? Is there any other options? Are you... I'm, was Whittington just a product of missing cup and we're moving on? Uh, a little bit, but I do think that Whittington is still like it, deeper format, more desperate. I think that he's an okay type of a play. But just again, it's the it's a young guy, it's a rookie who in two weeks, eight targets, ten targets. Yeah, the the, the big boys are not there. I get that, but he will still have like his role will not be af affected as much. I think by Cooper Cup. Puka coming back, that's a bigger question. Yeah, he Jordan Whittington has kind of played the Puka role, so I do expect it to be Cooper Cup to Marcus Robinson and Jordan Whittington on the field if you're going to play one of them, Whittington. But when Tutu Atwell comes in, which he comes in a lot, those are designed plays for him oftentimes. They get him in motion, get him open, and they throw the ball to him. And Marcus Robinson can easily be the wide receiver to any one of these games. So for me... I'm just out on all three of them. I, I don't okay. I don't want to play the game of maybe my guy ends up with six targets this game. I'll play Cooper Cup. Obviously, I'm going to play Kyron Williams and check out on the, the Rams. 
Kyron's rushing lines at 89 and a half. It's ridiculous. He's no unstoppable. Eyes. We did get Blake Corum too. What, what is his uh, is his touchdown? I assume it's like minus 1,000 because he <laughs> always gets a I touchdown. I guess the Raiders, he probably is. I mean, I did want to mention Blake Corum got two 10 zone attempts and one, red, uh, one additional red zone attempt last week. I don't think it really matters. I do wonder if the Rams fell out of contention at some point whether you'd see a little bit more of those running backs. I'm always trying to think of like uh -huh. mid-season trades right now. What is the viability of these guys during fantasy playoff weeks? Uh, I think Kyron's still upper echelon, but that would be just one of the things to add to the notebook is, you know, maybe Blake Corum gets more work because, you know, Kyron's been worn down, lots of carries, and you give another guy an opportunity if the season's over. I wonder how often, Kyle, maybe you can find this, but the I wonder how often a one and four team is favored by a full touchdown. Because that's that's what's happening here, which is kind of indicative of you know what the sports books are thinking of the Raiders. They're on the way to collapse. Yeah, yeah. Carolina's one and five. They take on the Washington Commanders, who are four and two. And guess what, Jason? Carolina not favored by seven. Um, the DraftKings Sportsbook line: Washington minus eight. The over under is fifty one and a half. That gives Washington nearly thirty points. Yeah, baby. That is the highest implied team total for the Washington Football Team over the last thirty six years. Wow! You found yourself a quarterback. Yeah, they have. And so, and they play fast and. They give you lots of fantasy goodness right now. You know, the lock, Jaden Daniels, you put him in there. It's Carolina. Carolina's atrocious. Terry McLaurin, the wide receiver, 12 on the year. You keep playing him. Mm -hmm. You know, Brian Robinson and Austin Eckler, both in play. Yes, I, I, I agree. I think Eckler is a, a great start this week. Even if Brian Robinson is active for the game, I'm throwing Austin Eckler into the lineup. I I would rather play him um, in in and utilize the running game of this team that is favored by so much. And you don't know how the touchdowns are going to come early. You hope it's Terry McLaurin. You you hope it's not like a Luke McCaffrey or Noah Brown touchdown. But you assume that they're going to run a lot and get a couple rushing touchdowns. I mean, that might be Jaden Daniels, not the running backs. But that I le that leads me to Zach Ertz. You you look at this matchup and you go, oh, this is great against Carolina. His his DK receiving line is only 30 and a half yards. I think that's a pretty well-placed line. I could see him not being super involved in this game, um, at least second half if, if they don't need him. So he is one of those very often. Like I think Zach Ertz is in almost 100% of leagues. He's rostered with two tight ends, and every week someone's deciding, do I go Zach Ertz or my other guy? And I think I would probably lean towards the other guy in this matchup. I, I, my deep cut for this one, it's, you mentioned it, Jay, is Noah Brown. Like, I don't know that I'm starting him in redraft, but this is keep an eye on, on him. Washington is trying to find their second wide receiver. That's been the kind of a story of their off season. You, part of it of like, no, it's not Dotson. We're going to trade him away. They bring Noah Brown in and it's been, you know, slowly ramping up where week four he did, he got 67% of the snaps then missed a game with the groin injury back into the mid-60s uh, the following week is he with eight targets in that game as well. I think that he's someone who should be on your radar. If you have an empty spot and you want to stash a wide receiver, I think Noah Brown is is high on that list. Yeah, that may, it makes sense. I mean, uh, De'Ami Brown was down to 32% of snaps this last week. Yeah. yeah, he had the touchdown the week before that. Deontay Johnson... You can play him, yep. Chuba Hubbard. You keep playing him, and what about know. what about uh, Xavier Liget in a in a matchup? I mean, the Commanders' offense fine. has been great, but their defense is bad. Andy Dalton can get it done. Um, he had a touchdown last week, seventy seven percent of the snaps. Are you willing? I feel like I'd start Xavier Liget over, uh, you know, a handful of of startable. He's flex just he's options. just risky, and I, I went down the road with him a couple weeks ago and got burned. So. He, he's an option. Jalen Coker, rookie, has been taking over as the third wide receiver for the past two weeks, and so he's a deep, deep desperation. Deep. Maybe more dynasty. Yeah, uh, a dynasty pickup option because he's out there now, sixty-five percent of the time. Somebody you can look at. 
Uh, there you go. I mean, it's nice when you have a team that's playing so well on offense, but also so bad on defense. And oh, it's well, and you, got, you kind of have two of those here in the same game because Carolina can't stop anybody. And, and Dalton hasn't, you know, this isn't a great offense, but Dalton and Chuba and Deontay, they can put up enough points. He's not Spencer Rattler. Right. The Kansas City Chiefs are 5-0. and They go to San Francisco. San Francisco's 3-3. Three and three. They're favored by one and a half. The DK Sportsbook over under here is 47. Okay. So uh, right Super now these Bowl are the, yeah, these are the these are also the top two teams by Super Bowl odds right now. Interesting. Baltimore is tied with San Francisco. The Chiefs are number one at plus five hundred. I was just reminded of the the great um coin flip who gets the ball first situation from the Super Bowl. I had kind of I forgot it. All, uh, you blotted that out of my mind. You last just reminded year. me, and I still don't remember. So remind when they, me. they that was when the the forty nine they deferred took right? the football. Or no, yeah, they yeah they took the football, and, and the Chiefs were going to defer if they had won. Yes, that's because what it was. even if you score a touchdown in the playoffs, the other team gets to possess the football. So, um, but yeah, that feels like forever ago. Patrick Mahomes, it, we've talked about it enough. I've started to see him on waiver wires at this point. 11% of the time he's giving you a okay game, basically. And and this is not one of them. This is not one where I'm excited about it, especially with the fact that you are so thin at wide receiver. Xavier Worthy is extremely limited in what he brings to the offense right now. You could always get a big play, but that is the only way you're happy. Juju, with the hamstring injury popping up, he's your possession guy with the trust of the quarterback. And then Travis Kelsey, his target shares have gone up. Yeah. But that hasn't led to good things for Mahomes. So you're you're kind of stuck in this place where, you know, Kelsey's in. But then how do you make those other decisions with this this matchup? I mean, you're on the road. You haven't been great on offense. You've been great on defense. I mean, I I, I think we need the injury status for today, obviously, but Juju is probably in for a for a lot of twelve teams. I think Juju is is a wide receiver three ish. I mean, what eight targets right before the bye week, the 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 actual bye week to say okay, let's rally the troops, figure out what is this offense moving forward, and I it just I think it has to be Juju. Um, and what do you do here with Kareem Hunt? His DK rushing line is forty nine and a half. You you play him. You, okay, yeah, he's, with a, confidence? he's in there yeah, confidently for okay. me. Yeah, I mean, the the first week he had 17 opportunities and was like, oh my gosh, okay, he just came off the street and he's the guy. The following week, he was the running back two in fantasy with 27 carries for over 100 yeah. yards. He's looked good. This is not an, as easy a matchup, but the San Francisco 49ers, they do give up receptions to the running back, and even though we haven't really seen Kareem Hunt used in that way yet this season in, in any kind of major ways for fantasy, I expect, uh, you know, a handful of receptions in this game. So I'm totally fine starting Kareem. Hunt. Kareem or James Conner against the Chargers? Oh, man. James Conner's been I, – I, I know he had a really bad week this last week, but he's been too good for too many years to bench him. Okay. Jordan Mason's status is up in the air this week. Could be Garendo-Patrick-Taylor combination or – even worse, Mason kind of limited, and those other two guys worked in. Are you? How do you approach that? Because it just feels like a really difficult situation. It it is. If Mason plays, though, I'm gonna play. Him. Yeah, I, I agree. This is one of those where you hope, and I know in the leagues where I have Jordan Mason, I made it a priority to go get Garendo. And so, hopefully, if you're out there, you've got those two guys. You know, you've got Jordan Mason and Garendo, and you just start whoever is. The primary back active. Mason, if he's active, and if Mason's gone, start Garendo. It's not a great matchup, though. Yeah. Ayuk has, has been really bad. He had one great week. His receiving line on DK is 62 and a half. Where are you with Ayuk right now? I saw him traded I in our league of record. Just absolutely baffled because like watching him play, he seems like he's still a really good player. Like it's it's not a this the skill has not evaporated or anything like that. <clears throat> He's still getting separation. You know, his metrics on that, like according to fantasy points, it's still strong, but the connection is just, it hasn't been there. But for this game, Juwan Jennings hasn't practiced on Wednesday or Thursday. Debo has been in a uh, non-contact jersey. So 
you, you might be forced into uh, George Kittle is my is my answer for this particular. So is matchup. that your way of saying you would avoid Ayuk? I would not have. No, I would not avoid him. But I'm not expecting a, a huge game. I'm, I'm, I'm so listen. I'm happy to play Ayuk. I, I okay. really, I really am. I, I want to make the case for him, and it's not just based on the injuries to others. Well, don't look at the box scores then. Right. That's that's my point. I think that's what everybody's looking at is the box scores and saying, "Oh man, you can't play him." Um, this is a player who obviously missed all of camp, came back a little bit slow. Two weeks ago, all of a sudden, he's awesome. He looks great, right? It's Arizona. Eight for 147 still. I mean, he's he's fine. This past week, you go, okay, Ayuk is back. He's into football shape. It wasn't like Ayuk, he had a bad end of game for fantasy. But if you watch the game, like, you know, you had Debo with a breakaway touchdown, yeah, yeah, drives yeah. over. You had Kittle with a breakaway 58-yard you know, two touchdowns, drives over. Like, it just wasn't his week, but he is not bad. There's a player who's been a top 15 wide receiver back-to-back -back years, got the bag. I, I, I'm happy to still con continue starting Ayuk because he's a good player on a good offense. If you want the opposite case, is something we talked about in the offseason. Ayuk was hyper, overly efficient last season. He was 17.9 a catch. He had seven touchdowns. He has no touchdowns through the air this, this year through six games. He has been outside the top 40 five of six weeks, and he's at 15.3 a catch. So those those numbers are – like he he had a perfect season last year to get to where he was, but um, it's hard to bench him in this game even with the tough matchup. Sunday night football, the Jets and Devontae Adams take on Russell Wilson and the 4-2 and two Pittsburgh Steelers. The DK Sportsbook line, New York, minus 1.5. The over-under is 39. Jason, you are the single biggest Mike Tomlin believer, lover, best friend – I've ever met. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with his? Is do you agree with his decision to change quarterbacks? I, you know, I do, and I do. As I, as I kind of outlaid earlier, I think this is a team that, although you're four and two, you're not out there destroying teams. You're not looking like a Super Bowl contender, and you have two quality quarterbacks that you've got to figure out before the playoffs who gives you the best chance to win. Um, even Fields came out. What a, what a what an awesome dude. He just came out and said straight up, he's like, I know we're four and two, but I haven't played that great. I know it. If I had played the way I should be playing, there wouldn't be a question here. So he sees, you know, the reality clearly. And the teammates love him. I don't know if you saw Najee talking about Justin Fields. I, I don't blame him for making this decision. Even if it proves to be the wrong decision, it's the process that gets you to the right conclusion. And so I think the decision is good. I, I, like I said, I don't, I don't think Wilson's going to be better than Fields. I really don't. Um, I hope for, you know, George Pickens and Pat Fryermuth or, and maybe someday Roman Wilson. I really, really hope that Russell Wilson is better than Fields and could get this offense moving. But with the offensive line struggles and with what we've seen Russell Wilson look like the last couple of years, I'm highly skeptical that it that it, the offense turns around. Is there any chance, Jason, that this is the ultimate really big brain Mike Tomlin move here of saying, I'm going to put Russ out against the Jets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And because uh, I know that Justin Fields against this Jets team, he will struggle. Right. Because anybody will struggle against this New York Jets defense. I'll put Russ out there, and then we get to move on completely. It's certainly a test for Russell Wilson, and this is um, not going to be graded on a curve. This is go out there and prove that you are a Hall of Fame quarterback worthy of leading the you know blue-collar Steelers or be, prove that you are the backup. I don't know if you knew this, but – Hawkinson actually already passed that test as well. Oh, oh dude, he, he is did. such a good test taker, man. Yeah. He really is. Najee Harris back at practice. His line is 54 and a half on DK. I mean, you you if you play him, you are you are grinding out a 10-point game. That's what it feels like. Or you get a touchdown and he runs for 30 yards. Yep. Those outcomes seem the most likely. The Jets add Devontae Adams. If I had him, I'd be playing him. I'd be playing him too. And Garrett I, Wilson, I I'd be playing as well. Garrett Wilson will be – he will be fine. It, yes. Everybody wants to break down every piece of analysis as a binary, black and white, Wilson good, Wilson bad. That is not at all the nuance of this situation. It's Wilson not top five, Wilson still top 24, Wilson still opportunities to succeed. Nuance is important in life. And I just – I just, want to tell people, like, when you hear things in life – they can just mean a little bit. You know, this is worse for Garrett Wilson. It is. 
but that that doesn't mean he's bad and that he, yeah. he shouldn't start him. It is worse for like just just take things with a grain of salt. All right, just, but just if healthy. he Salt's scores, delicious. if he scores, you'll get tweets. <laughs> Whatever happens, with him. <laughs> I mean, there's there's no reality where. But, you know, we're going to have, like, he he's going to go out there and have six for 65, and we're going to get both of them. I told you he's fine. <laughs> oh, he's ruined. Yeah, they uh, invented the internet, but they didn't add any nuance to the internet. Uh, yeah. Speaking of nuance, what do you do with George Pickens this week? Quarterback change, Sauce Gardner. Over P Pickens, is, Pickens is a risky play every week right now. He's one of the most brutal fantasy decisions every week because you didn't draft George Pickens extremely high, which means you have multiple kind of parallel. Like if you were Ayuk or Pickens, I don't. I would probably play Ayuk this week. Pickens is the only show in town there. The 49ers have shown that even without CMC, they can delete Ayuk from an offense five times. So it's like it's close. You you're gonna need a big play from Pickens. One big play. Ayuk can piece it together without a touchdown. We saw that two weeks ago, so I lean that direction. It's just, he's brutal. Pickens is always like, you want to play him because you don't want to miss the big game. Yeah, I, I've got Pickens as my wide receiver 33, so he's like a barely start. I would prefer, you know, if I had JSN or Jordan Addison, uh, even Lad McConkey, uh, I, I would play players like that over George Pickens. Against Sauce Gardner, I think you're going to need one big play, which can happen, but I can't, I would be shocked if, He's got a volume day. If he's got, you know, seven receptions and 88 yards, which would be great. I don't see that happening in this matchup. It'll be a fun game to watch. It really oh, will. Sure. And Aaron Rodgers could enter the fantasy conversation after this week. He could. Um, if we get signs that this offense is getting fixed under Todd Downing. is that That's his name, right? Todd Downing? I Jeff Downing? I don't recall. Correct. He's, Todd. He's, Todd. Okay. <laughs> Jeff's his brother. Um, Brees Hall, get him in your lineup. And we will move on. We're going to take a quick break and come back with Mike's favorite thing. Two Monday Night Football. Yay! Naturally, Kyle is chasing down the entire family tree of the Downing family to see if yes. there is a Jeff that is is a part of it. Um, Monday Night Football, we get the doubleheader. Oh, baby, Outback's going to be <laughs> popping. <laughs> One good game, one bad game. Uh, no, <laughs> two good games. Mm, okay. <laughs> no, I, I'm excited about both of these games. Well, that's because you're a Cardinals fan. Yes, exactly. Okay, but for everyone who's not. I mean, you still have tons of fantasy-relevant players in that game. Yeah, yeah That's yeah. what makes it interesting. Last night's game, not interesting because nobody you played yeah. except for maybe Javante when you were backed into it. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. you lucky son of a gun. Jalucky, I like that. J.K. Dobbins. Oh, yeah, Dobbins and McBride. You're happy. Everyone else, I don't know. I, I, Marvin Harrison, if he's active. Are we talking about that game first? Let's uh, yeah, do it. sure. Let's do that. Chargers-Cardinals is the second game. Chargers are two-point road favorites. The over-under is 44 on the DK Sportsbook. And Kyler's passing line set at 213. He's only had two top 12 finishes. I really, really think he has to have Marvin for you to be happy with this game. I, I just I, don't think yeah. he can do enough. Now, he can run the football. Uh, but but Jason, you pointed this out. Like the Chargers, the the name of their game is to to suck you dry. That is exactly my point with this game. Like I see a forty four point line, which is like an average game, and I think, yeah, right, good try. Harbaugh wants to yeah, high tee this into the ground. He's going to try to time a possession this thing because you can, if you want, if your strategy was, hey, 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 listen to this. Every time you run the ball, you can get three or four yards and lay down. Like, don't break anything <laughs> away. Just go out there and get a salt. Let's just get four every time. Go get four yards every time. Right. And I feel like you could do that against the Cardinals and just have 15 play drives where it's four-yard run, four-yard run, four-yard run, four-yard run until touchdown. I mean, I, it, this is hyperbolic, but this is kind of – that's the fear of how I see a game plan that could collapse the fantasy value of that game. That's why I'm – And the Chargers are a great defense against the run. James Conner is going to be up against it. Trey McBride, you're going to play him. And you can spot start Michael Wilson if Harrison misses. We I don't agree. have more news. No, and not yet. Unfortunately, I was in a very unfortunate situation where I wanted to play Michael Wilson, but only if Harrison missed. Mm -hmm. 
And my only other option was Bub Means, and I got stuck with Bub Means. So I, the the one thing I'll just add, because I agree, it, it, that's probably that's the Harbaugh way. But they did open it up against Denver. They did like thirty four pass attempts against Denver. Um, that that's by far the season high for for Justin Herbert. So I, I mean I don't know. I think there's a chance of uh, of them actually throwing the ball a little bit more. Like Chargers, Dobbins is. Are you messing around Dobbins with any great. other receivers? That's where I was going to go. Of like, I, I, Lad McConkey. I think is he's, he's I, limited on Thursday with a hip injury. Yeah. So so, watch that. But I think that he's okay. He's he's in an okay place right here, be, be, especially because the matchup is so brutal. You had Quentin Johnston uh, did not practice on Thursday with the ankle injury. So I think that it is. I think Lad's in play. Lad is the go-to wide receiver target-wise. It's not crazy down the field stuff, so without a touchdown, I think you're fine in a PPR league, and you're going to be meh in a half PPR. Obviously, in a standard league, you're not happy at all, but you're. I'm just saying you're not happy in a standard league. That has nothing to do with Lad McConkey. That's like, just because standard leagues aren't fun. We need the... <laughs> we. Okay. We need the... His, uh, his season high is uh, <laughs> wide receiver 20 and 19 so far. Yeah, we need the... We need the passing pie to be a little bit bigger because he's sitting at a 27% target share right now. That's like – for a rookie, that's that's a really strong number. For a veteran, that's a that's yeah. a great number. If you're up that high, the problem is the pie is so small. Yeah, so saying, they yes. did open it up a lot last week, which, which to your point, Mike, against Denver is shocking yeah. because you can run on Denver and you can't throw on Denver easily. Like, they're I like can tell you why they did that. Thank you. Easily. Patrick Sertan went down with a concussion, and oh. then they <laughs> threw the ball like twenty yeah, straight I, times. I don't remember the the timing of it, but I I know I feel like my memory is watching the game. Even at the beginning, they were throwing. I was like, "What is happening right now? What are we doing?" See the the nice thing about the Cardinals' defense is there isn't really someone on defense oh, no. that if they go down, they're like, "We're yeah. shifting our game plan." He, yeah. he he got concussed on the first defensive play. Was it okay. of the entire okay. game? Baltimore's four and two. Tampa Bay is four and two. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Baltimore minus three and a half. Over under is forty nine and a half. Go ahead, Jay. <laughs> yeah, baby. Laser Mayfield time. <laughs> I don't like how you say it. <laughs> it's creepy. Yeah. It's a little bit sultry. Man. Well, it's excited, is what it is. Mm. Oh, it that is. makes me feel worse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You didn't help your case. No, I. I mean, I was agreeing with Andy. <laughs> I was. This was not. Uh, Play we, Baker. We were in disagreement. Play Baker, the DK passing line, 257.5. He'd be in over Kyler, right? For sure. I think so, uh, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, Baker Mayfield has been running the ball a lot, and in a game against a really, really good defense with a with an exceptional offense across you know the field, you're, you're going to have to put up points and yards to be competitive in this home game. So 29 rushing yards this last week, 42 rushing yards the week before, and you've got a north of 250 – DK line for passing yards. It's just a matter of does he throw touchdowns. Right now he's leading the league in touchdowns. Zay Flowers. Because he's laser Mayfield. All Zay, right, I'm done. Zay Flowers, uh, my start of the week. I love him in this game. You're playing roulette right now with any tight end in Baltimore. Literally, I do not. We try to answer every question. If you ask me whether Mark Andrews or Isaiah Likely, which one is the better play, I literally do not know. I yeah. have no idea if you will be A, unhappy with both, B, happy with one, or C, happy with both. <laughs> probably not the last one. So A or B are probably the outcomes. Good luck. Good luck. I wouldn't – I'd be – it's all about the economy and what you've got. Yeah. I, I would play Najoku over either of those guys in a heartbeat. The – we have small signal. Uh, it's, look, Cincinnati, Mark Andrews got five targets. He got four the following week. Like, legitimately, if if you're saying Mark Andrews is getting five targets a week, that's very playable to me. Just be, because of, of the archetype of the player, I would accept five targets a week. Yeah, I I want more, but I'm saying, like, in, in, in the, the line of do I sit or do I start Mark Andrews, this week, we, again, it's just the two weeks, so we can go NBA GM rules and wait for the conclusion of this Tampa That's Bay game. That's not on fire. Wait, it's it's on target fire. Is that what you're looking for? It's, it's the line of will I play Mark Andrews? I will say this to Andy's point: NBA GM rules when you're on fire 
is that wait is that just two ma- or does no, it have to three. be two? Yeah, it's got to be two three. three pointers. So you no, you got to no. I know. Yeah, is it just Andrews two? has one right now? Okay, but is just any shot? You you can do a layup yeah, no, and yeah, another yeah. layup. Okay, you well can. then then target then targets should count for on fire here. Those those are two no, pointers. No, because you don't get fantasy points for targets. I'm just so talking about playability. It has ability. to go through the hoop. Targets don't go through the hoop. So you got to go at least receptions, not fantasy yes, points, yes, but receptions. Yes. Okay, so that's four and three the last two weeks. We are lowering the bar of fire yes. if we say targets <laughs> count. All right, that's fair. Um, I'm, I'm still like start- Kate Otten's a better play than both those guys. Probably. Uh, Probably. I, yeah, I mean he he's Kate Otten has been a top twenty four guy four straight weeks. He's been top twelve two out of. Top I mean, twenty four at wide receiver. Okay, look, is irrelevant. His he, target eight nine four six. If we're on fire, does he have ten points in a week yet this season? Kate Otten? No. Yeah, I'm starting it, Andrews. Okay, all right. You always will. I will. Rashad White, Bucky Irving, Sean Tucker, three headed monster is the words that they used. This is not good. Uh, Hot hand approach, which. I, I saw a great tweet from you, Andy. When you have six hands, it, the none hot, of them can be warm. Yes, exactly. Right. Yeah, none of them can be hot. I'll tell you whose hands can't be hot. Is that Rashad White? Rashad White. So are you straight benching Rashad White? Um, I mean, they could be hot with receptions. Or <laughs> Richard White, as our doc says. <laughs> <laughs> Did we get auto correct? Look, I think Rashad White <laughs> has played his way into Richard White this year because. Rashad White was awesome last year, but Richard's just not getting the job done. I, despite being knocked out early, he's still on pace for sixty-four targets, fifty-seven receptions. Yeah, the, the the inclusion of Sean Tucker into this, it's really messy. Is um, if White was out, would you play either I'd play of those Bucky. guys? Yeah, yes. I'd play Bucky. Yeah, the it's. I mean, we we still have to see what actually happens because Sean Tucker was one hundred ninety-two total yards. It was awesome, but. For the majority of the game, it was just Bucky Irving, and then they moved over and they're like, "Hey, Sean Tucker, you ready see for what you can do. Sterling Shepard uh, random touchdown week again? Because sure. I'm going to give it to you here. Okay. Oh, uh, is this the touchdown guarantee? No. Oh, okay. No, Darn. it's Sterling Shepard. That's Jay. fine, coward. Um, so I expect Rashad White or Richard White, whichever one, is going to play <laughs> Dick White. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, I see how you got there, uh, but. My point is, I think he's going to play football this week. Um, he's limited today in, or on the Thursday practice, which... <laughs> it was the intensity, man. <laughs> he was just like, this is this joke's going to kill. <laughs> and he just like, I can't say it fast enough. <laughs> I got to get it out there. Richard, you know another name for Richard? My grandpa goes, my dick. Oh. Um... Yeah, no, it's, it, look, I really appreciate the effort and the try. I really do. Um, oh, I'm, I'm going to stick with Richard. As far as, as, far as I'm concerned, that killed. I mean, oh, it did. you did? Yeah, no, I, I mean, know. I, I, I think was, it was worth it. I you was just explaining good. why it got me so good. I see the Falcon loved, back there. I loved it. Oh, the Falcon's probably still in shambles. Yeah. Um, A joke like that? You were saying some <laughs> words and stuff? Uh, Yeah, so I was saying that limited um, – with the foot injury on Thursday's practice, that's basically a Wednesday practice. I would have expected them to, you know, have that be off if he was trending towards not playing because it's a Monday night football game. So let's just assume that Richard White is playing. If he <laughs> is, I man. will never stop calling. It, he's got to play his way back to Rashad. DW until that, <laughs> until, until that he's Richard White. <laughs> yeah, DW. Oh my God. Okay. Um, DW. Well, now he just sounds like Darkwing Duck. Yeah, man. But that Darkwing Duck is awesome. See, isn't there a shoe store? Isn't DW? Like, yeah, isn't there a DW shoe is store? There? I'm pretty sure. We're out of control. Okay, Grandpa. <laughs> DSW. DSW. Okay, well, forgive me. We're so, already off the rails. Shoe foot white. <laughs> Go shoe, on. Yes, shoe foot white. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> if he starts, let's because I think that is the probable outcome, and you have this three-headed monster. Um, it's a very difficult run defense. People are going to want to know if you could play – Bucky with that with them all active. Bucky or Rashad. I mean, uh, I mean, I'd play I'd play Bucky over Rashad at this juncture. I would too. I think because it's a Monday night game and you might not know if Rashad White is going. If you if you have Bucky or Rashad or Sean Tucker, I would try to make a start earlier in the week. That's what I would 
personally try to do against this Baltimore Ravens defense. All right. Uh, injury updates for you. Devin Singletary is returning. Tyrone Tracy, uh, Brian Dable said he will get significant playing time and has earned it. So both guys out there, if you had to pick one, it would be Tracy for me. This is unfortunate. Dave Canales now saying that Deontay Johnson's rib area tightened up on Come him. Come on! Probably because he hasn't been practicing. His ribs are not worn in. This dude hates practice. Uh, it was a non-contact injury. We don't know. I, that doesn't sound good. Wait, this is – so it says it tightened up on him today. Please tell me the quote was from Wednesday. No. The quote was from today? Yeah. Recently. Oh, that's Yeah, this just happened. Um, and uh, Todd Downing does not have a brother named Jeff. Uh, Jonathan <laughs> Brooks has been ruled out. Mike Evans was on the side – working on the side with a trainer. Uh, he won't practice much this week. He's expected to play – I, again, he had comments. We didn't report them in the news. He had his own comments about what he thought that it wasn't a big deal. So we'll see if he's out there. It's a Monday night game. So do you have worries about that, like having to have a pivot before? Yeah, then? it's a problem. And maybe maybe he's in your flex and Otten's your pivot or something. Yeah, I would I would grab – since there's two Monday night games, I would grab a Monday night player. Maybe Michael Wilson. Yes, that was the name I was uh, going to throw out. Jonathan Taylor is also out. Yes. All right, let's do this. Fantasy Face-Off, presented by DraftKings. Okie dokie. Well, well, I thought I'd avoid this all year. Was that kind of naive? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wheel of Shame. You know, Jason's talking this big game because he's <laughs> the champion the last two weeks. Yeah. He has won by two points and one point. That's right. That's all it takes. All right, spin the stupid <laughs> wheel. Spin the wheel. All right, the wheel of shame is spinning. We got Starman. Where is he? What do I? Hey, hey, you guys. Hey, hey you guys. guys. <laughs> oh, was it? Uh, I always want to say it's sloth. Wanna, sloth. Yeah, sloth. I was, a, was going to say chunk, but that's not. No, it's sloth. It is. It's a sloth mask. It's a sloth mask. Baby Ruth. <laughs> I can see and say nothing. <laughs> You, you should have, eye you should have on one eye hunt. hole. You got to pull right it down eye. further. Wait, did there you, you go? Oh, there it is. One eye hole. And a, and a little mouth hole there. <laughs> can you there. hear me? Yeah, we well, can hear you. <laughs> Great. Oh, you look good. You got to say, hey, you hey, guys. guys. <laughs> there you go. Oh, boy. Shout out to the Goonies. It smells terrible in here. All right, we're jumping into our lineup. <laughs> <laughs> smells terrible. You're going to need to speak up. <laughs> I wore it earlier. <laughs> Ass underpants. Quarterback. <laughs> Yeah, quarterback. Continue. <laughs> You're I'm just... setting the table. You can. Go oh, oh, all right. Um, I'm, I'll jump in. I'm going my start of the week. I'm taking Geno Smith. Well, I'm going your start of the week, Geno Smith. Oh, what's we the right. cost on him? What's the that? cost is fifty eight hundred. Say what's that? Yeah, yeah. that's because I'm in a dumb mask. <laughs> Jaden Daniels, seventy six hundred. Wow. I am live with Jaden. Okay. okay, and up number one most expensive quarterback of the week at running back. I am going to stick with Chuba Hubbard. In that game against Washington at 6,500. And then Tony Pollard, hopefully the only bright spot for the Titans against Buffalo, 6,300. Yeah, Tony Pollard at 6,300 is also in my cash lineups. Um, but I paid up for Kyron Williams against the Raiders, oh, 8,100. Uh, give me give me more of them touchdowns, I love. Did, so you got Pollard as the I've got Pollard and Kyron. I have Kyron at 8,100, and I have Alexander Madison at just 5,500 in the game against the Rams defense. Let's go, Alexander Madison. At wide receiver, DK Metcalf is my stack of choice with Geno Smith. Then I have the surging Drake London in that game against Seattle. Trying to hope for some correlation. What, what is his cost? He is a very nice 6,900. Oh, that's and then a I have great price. Jamison Williams taking on Minnesota. He is 6,000. Okay. Um, I have DK Metcalf stacked with Geno as well, so we cancel each other out there. Um, I went with a different uh, very nice 6,900 so player <laughs> in uh, Devontae Smith. Um, right. uh, so hopefully, you know, uh, Thibodeau is on IR, so their, their defense is a little worse for the Giants. And then I've got currently in my lineup Deontay Johnson at 6,600, my start of the week. I think he's great. I will play him if he's active. My pivot, should he be inactive, will be Tank Dell. Uh, okay. He's $100 difference. I have this uh, little-known wide receiver, Justin Jefferson, in my lineup. Okay. 8,500. Jaden Daniels and Justin Jefferson. Wow. Against Detroit. I've got Drake London as well at 6,900. And 
I have a, a really just incredible 3,000. Say we got to save some cash. Jalen Coker. <laughs> Jalen Coker in the lineup for right. Carolina at 3,000. Can I okay. tell you guys, like, I, I made a mistake. Did because you? I love Devontae Smith, and, and you know, I was targeting the banged-up uh, New York Giants, which yeah. now apparently they're not as banged-up. But 6900 for yeah, Devontae issue. Smith and 6900 <laughs> for Drake London feels like yeah. I should have been on the Drake London yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, it, it feels like that. I'm glad to be on this side. And then my final three, Kyle Pitts in that game as well. Uh, at How much four, is he? He's 4500 the, the price was just, you know, I'm doubled up on Falcons here, but whatever. Uh, my defense is, ooh, it's the Rams against the Raiders at 3,000. And my flex is currently Juju Smith-Schuster at 4,000. Obviously have to watch his uh, – Do you know your pivot? Uh, it's, it's probably Noah Brown. Okay. Who's also 4,000. I also have Juju Smith-Schuster at 4,000. My pivot would be David Njoku um, okay. at 4,100. I've got Jatavian Sanders – Oh, uh, at tight end uh, went low at twenty nine hundred. Um, he's actually You're been, looking at me with Jalen Coker. <laughs> yeah, he's he's been well. This is my tight end. Um, but against Washington, the matchup is there. He's been on the field, been, so been getting receptions. Andy having only one actual visible eye, but I can see it moving around in there is very disturbing. It's off. It's off. It's off putting. Yeah, uh, and then I've got the brown. <laughs> And then I've got the Browns. Um, they're playing against Cincinnati. Good defense, but they usually give them troubles. They're at home, twenty five hundred. Yeah. I don't have David Sanders. <laughs> I've got David Njoku. Yeah. Uh, at forty one hundred, I've got the Giants defense uh, bare bones, twenty five hundred against the Philadelphia Eagles. That's scary. And then I have Adonai Mitchell in my flex All spot right. at thirty seven hundred. That's a that's a fun boom bust play for yeah. Cash. Uh, you know what's not as fun is um, that mask. This mask. Why don't one of you guys? Yeah, I got it. That was fantasy out. forecast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. New DraftKings customers bet five bucks to get two dollars in bonus bets. Oh, they're going to get two hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, two hundred in bonus bets instantly. Download the sportsbook app and use code Ballers only at DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. That is it for today's show. <laughs> That's it for today's show. You know, I'll the take extra it. eye hole would let more air in. Talk through the eye hole. There's no <laughs> Good luck, everyone. I'll see you on Sunday. Goodbye. Oh, oh, oh. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and y 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash ftball.